lead the march. I'm a lead march. I'm a lead march. Listen, I'm gonna lead the march, B. I'm gonna start protesting. I'm gonna be on the front lines because the UK banks have scrapped dividends due to recession fears. Listen, I've received quite a few messages. I've received one very, very interesting YouTube comment, which I'm gonna read out a bit later in this video and give you my thoughts and opinions on their comment around this whole situation. But the UK banks, due to pressure from the Bank of England, are scrapping dividends pretty much till October or pretty much for the end of the year, depending on you know their dividend schedule, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about the impact to the market. I'm going to talk about the impact to my portfolio, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts on that comment. If you want to know more, like, comment, subscribe. Help the channel get to 5k subscribers and we can get the world of investing out to more people. I'm at 4522 at the time of creating this channel. So yeah, less than 500 to go. So thank you to every single one of you that subscribed from the beginning or recently. It's much appreciated. But let's get into this. Listen, at the moment, it's day, I don't know, 158 of quarantine, it feels. I don't really know. I'm just locked up. I'm losing my mind right now. That's why I'm singing, I'm beatboxing. Just expect the next 20 videos or however many whilst we're in quarantine to be a little bit tapped, man, because I'm under lockdown and it just reminds me of when I was an E-Wing playing dominoes. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. I ain't never been in the bin. Listen, let's get into the topic. UK banks scrap dividends as recession fears build across Europe. I'm reading this from CNBC. Barclays, Santander, Lloyds, NatWest, Standard Chartered and HSBC confirmed late on Tuesday that they will not be paying out dividends in 2020. The European Central Bank ECB last week also called on banks across the Eurozone to refrain from dividend payments and share buybacks until October. Some of the UK's biggest lenders have agreed to scrap billions of pounds of payments to shareholders following pressure, pressure from the Bank of England. They ain't seen pressure until I start knocking on them doors. Trust me, don't know pressure soon enough. Barclays, Santander, Lloyds, NatWest, Standard Chartered and HSBC confirmed late on Tuesday that they will not be paying out dividends in 2020 after the Central Bank's Prudential Regulatory Authority, PRA, urged British commercial banks to preserve capital in order to help support the economy during the likely recession arising from the coronavirus pandemic. Listen, Sometimes, yeah, I mean, you can't obviously believe everything you read, but that for me is probably arguably one of the really, one of the most powerful sentences in this whole thing. The PRA urged British commercial banks to preserve capital, so they're telling them what they need to do with their balance sheets in order to help support the economy, obviously, during the likely recession, not even just during the if a recession was to come or during the potential of a recession, the fact that they put the likely recession says a lot, arising from the coronavirus pandemic, which obviously we know is the trigger for all of this. Although the decisions taken today will result in shareholders not receiving dividends, they are a sensible precautionary step, depending on who you're speaking to, given the unique role that the banks need to play in supporting the wider economy through a period of economic disruption. The PRA said in a statement, the Bank of England has also urged banks to ditch bonuses for top executives. Oh, that's a nice little side note. Maybe that should have been, you know, the, the most important thing. But anyway, I digress. The European Central Bank, ECB last week, also called on banks across the Eurozone. So it doesn't matter whether it was in Brexit or out of Brexit, the same thing would have happened pretty much from dividend payments and share buybacks until October. It doesn't really say actually for UK banks when they would, um, if there's like an end date for the Euro for the Eurozone, they've given at least an end date of October. For the UK banks, I've not actually seen an end date. If you have, please put that into the comments, but it could be actually for the whole year for UK banks. Anyway, um, in order to support households, small businesses and corporate borrowers to, or to absorb losses on existing exposures to such borrowers. So obviously there's going to be a lot of borrowers that are potentially going to default. Um, they're going to default on their loans because they're going to be interacted by Corona. And obviously the bank is going to have to absorb a lot of those losses. And because of that, then they don't want them to, you know, ruin their balance sheets potentially by giving out more dividends effectively. Investors, patience tested. I'm going to lead the march. <laughs> Lee Wild. Head of equity strategy at British investment platform Interactive Investor said Wednesday that what initially looked like a few short weeks of dividend suspensions was turning into a long, hard slog for investors. And this is exactly what it is. And that's why I had to just drag that long, hard 
slog. Hey, quarantine's got me messed up. Because it is, it is. At the end of the day, this is gonna test a lot of you guys' patience. I'm gonna get, let me get to my thoughts later. Let me just carry on. With no idea when the virus will end, a little or little clue what the financial impact will be, businesses are having to prepare for the worst as income investors' patients get tested like never before. While said, investors will have to get used to receiving their dividend income from a shrinking pool of stocks. I announced some cuts last week. The cuts are now increasing, so the pool of stocks that will be paying dividends is shrinking. For the time being, an income diversification, both a sector and country level will likely become even more key. Banking stocks, have historically been a key holding for those looking to generate income from investments. A history of healthy dividend payments was a key reason many investors held on to Lloyd's. I'm going to lead the march <clears throat> during and beyond the financial crisis, even as the share price plummeted, according to AJ Bell, investment director Russ Mould. Almost a fifth of companies listed on Britain's blue chip FTSE 100 index have now cancelled or postponed dividends. And with that number likely to rise as a nationwide shutdown persists. So there's gonna be obviously a lot more that's going to potentially do that across, you know, across different sectors, etc. While 2020 will go down in history as the year's stocks collapsed and dividends dried up, hopefully the world will get back on its feet and return to normality before too long, Mold said in a note on Wednesday. For now, you're more likely to see companies going cap in hand to shareholders asking for money rather than giving them cash so you know i think that says a lot i'm reading this from the financial times uk bank shares plunge after sector halts dividends on boe warning bank of england warning look you've got a picture of standard chartered with you know what i mean the old bill in front of it the old bill's there because you know what they know i'm coming because i'm going to lead the march <clears throat> UK bank stocks plunged on Wednesday after the sector halted dividends and buybacks in response to the Bank of England's warnings against payout billions of pounds to shareholders during the coronavirus pandemic. So what we're seeing here, we're seeing HSBC and Standard Chartered fell more than 8% and 7% respectively. We're seeing that HSBC had fallen 23% earlier in the year, um, around half as much as, as its more UK focused peers. It was due to pay out 4.2 billion in dividends in two weeks time. In two weeks time, 4.2 billion was due to be paid out and that's now, that's now been halted, which is so, so, so painful for HSBC investors. The declines for UK lenders focused on their domestic market were also significant. Barclays was due to pay 1 billion in dividend on Friday. I saw my Barclays shares um, I can't remember when, a couple of months back. So I probably um, missed the XDIV on that anyway. So that's fine. Um, on Friday, dropped over 7%. Lloyds and RBS both fell more than 5%. And obviously Lloyds has had a bit of a torrid time recently. So that's, you know, that's an increase to that. So on my Simply Wall Street, there is a wonderful section down here, which basically gives me an indication to how much I'm going to earn annually in dividend payments. And I mentioned in my last video, that I'm sitting at, I was, well, I was sitting at around um, 1,400 the last time I checked, but the last time I checked was probably around two months ago, or maybe a month and a half, two months ago, perhaps. Um, I'm just checking now, because I don't check this all of the time, obviously, because, you know, it's not like we get monthly dividend payments, etc. But now it's at 1,179. So it's been about, it's about 300 pound impact economically, you know, for a year for me in dividends at this current juncture, at this current moment. Obviously this figure would have grown as I would have invested more. And Lloyd's was moving to a quarterly dividend this year. Um, and who knows, who knows if I would have picked up another bank? Probably not, to be honest, because I was moving to more of a growth strategy, but obviously I'm losing that on Lloyd's. And it's really interesting because yesterday or two days ago, which I'm going to talk about in my portfolio update, I just received a dividend payment from Imperial Brand, which is my single largest dividend payment I've ever received of £83. So being that large, um, it did reinforce the message of having a you know a balanced growth and dividend portfolio. I'm, I'm a hybrid investor for those of you that guys follow the channel. So I'm about dividends, but I'm also about growth stocks as well. So I'm kind of a balance of both, probably leaning to more, more, towards more growth, but obviously the dividends is a real key part, you know, getting that money, compounding it, reinvesting it and seeing how that goes. But yeah, the dividends has increased and Lloyd, interestingly, has dropped from the list. So simply All Street was, was nice and quick to update that. And if I go to Lloyd's and actually find out, you know, more about the situation and all of you guys can do this if you do have Simply Wall Street as well. I click on Lloyd's right there. You can see the share price 29p or something. Oh, horrible, horrible. 
Look at that. Look at that. She's looking like a slide in a broken down park in, I don't know, Lewisham or something. I don't know. But listen, when you click on dividend cancel, you can see that Lloyds Banking Group announces the cancel of payment of its um, dividend in 2019. Um, and obviously, they're canceling it for 2020. So, you know, I, I anticipate that, you know, a lot of these stocks are just going to continue to fall because you know what? There's not really an incentive for income investors. However, for me personally, I do see it slightly different and I do see it with a balanced view. This coronavirus situation is, of course, extremely serious. So I believe that what they're trying to do is not to allow us to get into a worse impact than what we did in the last recession. I shared something on my Instagram, at Infant Investors, if you don't follow the Instagram, which showed the quarter, the first quarter drop of 1929, 1929, the Great Depression of 2000, and, of 2000, dot com bubble of 2008, um, the Great Recession, and of you know 2020, the coronavirus pandemic, and basically the lot, the earlier three dropped around between seven to nine percent in the first quarter of the year. For the coronavirus pandemic, we've dropped 28 percent in the first quarter. Um, which is a significant, significant drop. So if we're dropping over one, you know, one fourth of, of our value um, over one quarter, then you can see that this is a very, very serious situation. And because of that, I, I kind of understand why they're potentially doing this. Now, obviously, it isn't nice for dividend investors, particularly Tango Echo Alpha, shout out to you, because he wrote to me and he said, hey, Curtis, would you mind doing a video or mentioning this in a video? I noticed the Bank of England wrote to some UK banks asking them to not pay dividends to shareholders due to the virus impact. So far, Lloyd's, RBS, Barclays, HSBC, Standard Chart have confirmed they will not pay dividends, instead holding onto the funds. Personally, I feel that if a bank has sufficient capital in reserve and has a healthy balance sheet, then it should be paid. I'm going to just stop right there. I wholeheartedly agree with you. I don't agree with imposing um, onto the banks of, you know, what you should be doing. I believe in maybe guidance and direction. Um, but what we noticed when we actually looked at the article is that it talked a lot about pressure. And I feel that sometimes there is an undercurrent of pressure that it, it's kind of subliminal. It's kind of like, you know, when someone's telling you you shouldn't really do that, but they're not telling you not to do that. But when they're saying you shouldn't really do that, it's basically saying don't do that. And if you do do that, you'll be in trouble, even though I told you not to, I didn't tell you not to do that. I just said you shouldn't do that. It's kind of kind of like that subliminal pressure. And I think that when banks peers start, you know, dropping their dividends, then individual CEOs and CFOs are going to have to take, you know, a call. And some of them probably didn't want to. I bet if you spoke to, you know, all five of those CEOs or CFOs, I bet you three out of five probably didn't want to do that. Um, but, you know, this is this is this is part and parcel. But I do hear you. I and I and I agree that if their balance sheets are fine and they're able to forecast and model the impact of defaults, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, then you know what, um, they should continue to pay or at least reduce their payment, but maybe not necessarily cut it altogether. Right now, I feel a bit that people who are prudent, save or invest are getting screwed over a bit. Maybe I should blow every last penny I have and ask the government to bail me out. No, don't do that because they will not help you, mate. They will not help you. Listen, I get that. This is the whole middle class squeeze. I don't know if you're middle class or not. You might be working class, you might be rich, upper class, elite, Illuminati. I don't know who you are, but what I will say is that there is this whole concept of the middle class basically evaporating before our eyes. Um, I'm not middle class, so it, you know. Like, I guess it, it all depends on you know where you see yourself sitting. But what that basically means is that more people are the richer becoming richer. So if you actually are breaking into the wealthy, you're actually then you know a wealthier one percent, and that is obviously not middle because you're at the top top tier of whatever region you're in, and the working class is also becoming greater because more people are losing their jobs, people are lower income, people can't afford the cost of living. Cost of living is increasing, rents or salaries aren't increasing in line with that, um, and effectively you, you're then getting this squeeze of the middle class, and the middle class is effectively dropping to either lower class or some of them are lucky enough to go into what's called the upper class. I've talked about this in the previous video, I can't remember which one, but with that, it does mean that people who do save, who do invest, they will always feel like they're getting the, the bad end of the deal. It's kind of like, you know, some people that get benefits and they get two grand. I remember when I was working in the bank one time, a woman came to see me and she was like talking about, so I can't remember what she was talking about, but I checked how much she was getting on benefits. She was getting £4,000 a month in benefits. She had seven kids. 
And I remember I was on, I'm not even gonna tell you what I was on, but I was on, I was on a very, 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 very tiny minuscule salary at that point. And I was thinking, what? Four grand just to have babies. I need to make some babies. So listen, there is people that, you know, in, 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 in that side of the coin that actually, you know what? they feel it's more beneficial to not even try or to not even you know bother doing anything because the government will bail out so i do get the sentiment but i will say you just got to kind of stick it out you got to you know relook at your portfolio relook at where you can diversify as it said maybe look at other options that aren't cutting dividends maybe look at some growth options um also i do think there's another benefit in terms of capital gains listen i think Anytime there's a panic reaction such as this, where loads of investors are selling, and I think probably a lot of institutional investors are selling because of the volume that they would be getting in their dividend payments, I do personally believe that um, the, the, the stocks would have dropped quite significantly, but what might also happen actually is that then people start to invest because Lloyd's is now sitting at what, 28p. So because of that, people might invest. And you know what, Lloyd's could go to, I don't know, 40p, but then that's already like a 60% increase. So from a capital gain standpoint, there might still be some place here. So I do see both sides of the coin. Maybe I should, blow, I know, I already read that. Don't do that, don't do that, Tango Echo Alpha. I'm not trying to undermine the impact of the virus that is having a horrible impact on the lives of people in this country and feel for people who have been impacted beyond just adhering to social distancing and staying at home. But the solution to that isn't encouraging people not to save or invest, in my opinion. If I had invested in banks right now, I would probably sell and redeploy the funds. So you haven't actually invested in banks, which is interesting. I had, um, and obviously it's interesting um, the way I, I see it as well. Now, listen, I understand any primarily income investor to feel this way, to be perfectly honest. Um, it did say in the CNBC article that investors are losing patience. And this is just a beautiful, a beautiful example of where those two sentiments definitely align. Me personally, I'm not going to sell Lloyd's crazily. One, because I'm like at 40% loss or 50% loss or whatever it is at the moment. And two, when I am able to start investing next week, Lloyd's are probably one of the candidates that I'll probably target first because there will be some capital gain appreciation that will come back. People will relax. Things will start to turn and there will be some capital gain appreciation. Maybe not in the short term, but I, I am hoping in the long term. And the fundamentals of Lloyd's last in 2019 was perfectly sound. Apart from the PPI situation, they were perfectly sound fundamentals. I think it was 2.9 billion in pre-tax profits. So you know what, when I, I always try and to to try and distill the signal from the noise. And what I mean by that is that you're gonna get a lot of noise, a lot of headlines, a lot of real economic stuff that's gonna impact the stock price temporarily. But I think if you still look at the underlying fundamentals and you still believe in it, yes, you might not get a dividend payment this year, but you know what, in 2021, you might get really large dividend payments if you start to put money in while shares are still cheap. Anyway, that's what I'm personally gonna do. I'm definitely not selling Lloyds off the back of this. Um, and that's just how I feel about the situation. But for those of you guys out there, I would definitely um, heed the advice of the article. If you are a primarily a dividend investor, I'm not primarily a dividend investor, I have dividend stocks. But if you are primarily a dividend investor, then obviously, you know, your your dividends are going to be at risk, you know, across the board. And it's definitely worth understanding what stocks you have, what stocks pay dividends, what stocks you might be interested in that aren't doing dividend cuts um, in order to potentially diversify. Uh, and maybe you can take advantage of that situation. Listen, Stay positive. I know that I'm I'm a little bit, you know what I mean? I'm losing my mind a little bit as well, but you know, we're all in this together and I'm sure that, you know, in the long run, everyone will look back at the situation and be like, it was actually probably one of the biggest opportunities to generate some significant amounts of capital. So yeah, stay positive and I will catch you later with another investment video. Peace. I'm gonna lead the march. Boom.